Da -na 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 -na. You say it's my birthday. Da -na 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 -na. I better stop there because I can't afford the royalties, even a horrible version like that. Hey, folks, this is the Paranormal 60, and it's a live 55 birthday bash extravaganza. My spooktacular is about to begin. My room is filling up with people that would like to share weird, fun, spooky stories with us. And if you would like to join in and you're watching on the YouTube channel, just look on today's description. There is a link you can click and you too can be a part of tonight's program. Uh, for those of you that are listening and watching elsewhere, just make sure you pop on over to the YouTube channel, the Paranormal 60 YouTube channel. Look at the description of tonight's show. You'll see the link there and you too can be a part of the very best in paranormal programming. I'm Dave Schrader and this is the Paranormal 60. I'm not going to stand here and listen to this baloney. He won't know. He doesn't stand for baloney. Sounds like a lot of supernatural baloney to me. Supernatural. Perhaps... Baloney, perhaps not. Hello, my little darklings, and thank you for joining me tonight. This is my 55th birthday. I'm not a numerology guy, but 11, 22, and 55. I don't know if all those double digits mean anything. I know 11 and 22 are power numbers. Not that I want to brag, but they are what they are. 55, though, it's just the age I'm at. Do you guys remember being children and thinking of 55? I just want to, I want you guys to let this sink into your head right now. All right. This is the face of 55. This is not the face I remember 55 year olds looking like. You guys watch the show, The Golden Girls? You've at least seen pictures of the Golden Girls. Do you know that when they started, Betty White was 53? Her character was 53 and she was considered a golden girl. I'm 55. That must make me a rusty antique. But we are here. We're going to have fun tonight. I've got a bunch of people joining in the rooms. They are here to spend some time with us. We're going to tell some ghost stories, some supernatural moments. We're going to share some memories. It's going to be a great time. I want to thank all of you. Plus, I've got a really cool little thing that I'm going to play here in a bit. Um, it's November 22nd. We can't possibly just skip past the fact that uh, my birthday shares a date that will forever live in infamy. That's right, the birth of Jamie Lee Curtis. Well, and the assassination of JFK. We've got a really weird, cool paranormal story that I'm going to share in just a little bit. And uh, you guys get to hang in and listen to that. And it's got some music and special effects. It's, I don't want to brag, but we, we went all out. I spent the entire year's budget on <laughs> one audio bit for you guys. Of course, I have no budget, so it was not real hard to do. Uh, listen, real quickly, before we get going, I thought I would uh, share something with you. Many of you have have been watching my journey on Ghosts of Devil's Perch. And I got to tell you, I, you know, I, I broke out my bolo ties. Most of you that follow me know I'm a huge Springsteen fan. And when he went to the bolo ties for his 1988 album, Tunnel of Love, I too became a bolo wearer. And uh, I've been a closet bolo wearer ever. I feel like I'm in some kind of weird support group right now. My name is Dave and I wear bolo ties. But long before bolo ties were cool, I was invited to be an important part of my aunt's wedding. Oh, the years don't matter when. I mean, you'll probably be able to tell by the photograph. My aunt takes me in, foolishly allows me to choose my own shirt. And then she took me over to the tie counter. Gorgeous ties everywhere. But I saw the one. The one tie that was going to set me apart from all the rest. This is my aunt's favorite picture and memory of me. It's the one my mom would always post on her Facebook messages when she was alive because she got such a kick out of it. So before bolo ties were cool, I was sporting <laughs> a giant white bow tie. Yeah, for those of you listening and missing out on it, got to check out our YouTube page once in a while. Go check out the videos. But that's uh, that's me looking very uh, opi. Opie Taylor, I think, is a little Richie Cunningham. That's what you're looking at right there on the screen, folks. Giant white bow tie, and yes, a paisley shirt under a blue blazer. Kind of styling. Now they're wearing that on the NFL Sunday shows all the time, so I was way ahead of the curve. All right, speaking of getting ahead of the curve, let me just dive right into the JFK story, and then I want to start getting into the callers because we've got a lot of you lining up here 
in the uh, chat room. A lot of you came in early. Some of you were here. We're 30, 40 minutes early tonight. So thank you for doing that and being ready to go. But uh, let's start off tonight's night of high strangeness with a story involving a former president and an assassination. This is JFK. I remember the day, a true life encounter from Jared Benson. Dallas was abuzz with excitement. The president, our president, was in Texas for a visit. There was huge fanfare, excitement, and a parade-like atmosphere. To say our family were Kennedy supporters was a bit of an understatement. We were fervent servants. My Aunt Evelyn was among the biggest of all. Aunt Evie, as we called her, prattled on and on about JFK like he were her own son. I think she may have rivaled even Joe and Rose in the pride department when it came to Jack, as she called him. It was November of 1963. On this day, our family was knocked out of commission with what I think could only be akin to a version of the Black Plague. We were all down and out, sick, fevery, achy. It was horrible. Other than that, it was just another day in Dallas. We had congregated in a small breakfast nook in our home to partake in my mother's soup, trying to find resiliency in the ultimate of comfort food. The grandfather clock in the hall rang out with a powerful single bong to mark the time. It was 12.30. A few minutes later, the phone rang. Mom stood up, shuffled across the kitchen floor, and grabbed the receiver of our lime green home phone hanging on the wall. Benson residence. She chirped. Immediately, her expression changed. I'm sorry, who is this? Who? Evie? What are you saying? With that statement, we all turned to look at Mom. I don't think anyone breathed the entire time she held the phone. Who was shot? Who is dead? When? Oh my lord, what? How is this possible? How is this possible? She cried out in astonishment and tormented pain. My father stepped up and approached my mother. For God's sakes, Margaret, who is that? What's going on? He barked out. With that, Mom turned to him. Her eyes rolled straight back up in her head and the phone slipped from her hand, striking the floor. Just moments before she did, she fell to the ground in a heap. We all leaped up and ran to her. My father was already cradling her, stroking her face, trying to rouse her back to consciousness. I reached for the phone to see what was going on and who was there, and I was met with an annoying, shrill sound, the screeching that phones made in that day when they were left off the hook. I stood up and replaced the phone on the silver hook and turned my attention to my parents. My mom was coming to at this point and shaking quite badly. Bob, it was Evie. She said Kennedy had been shot. He's dead. It was Evie, Bob. It was Evie. Dad tried to calm her. Well, that can't be right, Marge. She's in a coma. The, the, the stroke. The stroke, honey. She had a stroke he said, almost trying to convince himself. I snapped on the TV and we waited with anticipation as the TV crackled to life. I checked the stations, but there was no mention of Kennedy, a shooting or anything of its kind. It was some jackass kid pulling a prank, Dad assured Mom. No, Bob, it was Evie, she sobbed. Dad called the hospital and checked on Aunt Evie. She was there, still very much in a coma and unresponsive. Dad was reminded of our appointment with the doctors the following day to make a very hard decision. The rest of our day was uneventful and Mom eventually calmed down. The following morning, as a family, we went to say goodbye to Aunt Evie. The stroke was extensive and she was completely unresponsive and living only with the aid of machines. It was November 22nd in Dallas. We sat in the room, taking turn holding Aunt Evie's hands, saying our goodbyes and sharing fond memories and our fair share of tears. When suddenly, the hospital sprang to life. There were cries from down the hall. Doctors and nurses filled the rooms. All eyes were on the TV. It was about 12.40 p.m., and news was being reported that JFK had been shot and was in transit to the hospital. We exchanged baffled looks. Our mouths hung open in pure confusion. It was exactly... 
24 hours since we received that call from Aunt Evie. My comatose aunt? The one that didn't have a phone in her room? That called to tell us Kennedy had been shot and was dead. One day before it happened. Like the rest of the world, we sat transfixed to the TV, KRLD in Dallas, watching the story unfold before our very eyes. We were aghast as the sound of police sirens screamed outside the hospital. They were bringing the president here, to Parkland Memorial, where Aunt Evie lay in a comatose state. This is Walter Brown guide in our newsroom, and there has been an attempt, as perhaps you know now, on the life of President Kennedy. He was wounded in an automobile driving from Dallas Airport into downtown Dallas, along with Governor Connolly of Texas. They've been taken to Parkland Hospital there, where their condition is as yet unknown. We have not been told their condition at Dallas in the downtown hotel room. A group had been gathered to hear President Kennedy when he was waiting his arrival. Let's switch down there now where Eddie Barker of KRLD is on the air. As you can imagine, there are many stories that are coming in now as to the actual condition of the president. One is that he is dead. This cannot be confirmed. Another is that uh, Governor Connolly is in the operating room. This we have not confirmed. The president was whisked from the scene of the attempted assassination or assassination, depending upon his condition, of course, at this hour, uh, by bus to Parkland Hospital. And uh, the president uh, undoubtedly is in the emergency room at that hospital, which would be on the first floor of uh, Parkland. No. Uh, word is yet we are awaiting something more official it is of course difficult certainly uh, to go on scanty reports within 30 minutes of arriving aunt evie let out a gurgling sob and a single tear rolled down her cheek then she slipped away Our attention turned back to the television set and newscaster Walter Cronkite. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. That day in Dallas, Texas, we lost a true American, someone that stood for all the things that are good and right in the world, love family and commitment to our country oh yeah we lost our president too i will never forget where i was that day or the day before kennedy was killed how's that for a story to start off with colonel wow yeah that was pretty intense there uh dave uh do you remember where yeah. you were when Kennedy was assassinated, Marty? Hmm. Well, were you uh, graduating college, riding a brontosaur to school? Let's see. That happened in uh, November, and uh, yeah, right, yeah, right. I was about <laughs> uh, I was about four months old at that point. So, hmm. yeah, very good. Where yeah. were you? Were you in a grassy knoll by any chance? What? No. Why do you ask, Dave? Hmm. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Interesting, Colonel. All right, yeah. let's get to it. we got a lot of people joining in. And if you're trying to get in and you can't, that's because we have a full lineup here of people in our green room, and it can only hold so many people. So we're going to go in. We'll take some of these uh, visitors. We'll hear their stories. And uh, once they're done, we'll let go. And, and when you see somebody drop off, folks, jump on if you'd like to be a part of tonight's show. Waiting the longest is Mandy. And it turns out her favorite number is number 52, Marty. Oh, yeah. Wow. Hey, Mandy, how, how are you doing? Hello. So good to good see to you see guys. You. Thank you for having us on. Well, thank you for coming on. All right, so you've got an interesting uh, story to share with us. And yeah, uh, is I your husband going to add anything to this, or is he just going to look ominous in the background? Support. No, he's part Support. of the story. He's part of the plot because it kind of happened at oh. one point in two different states at the same time. So it was a really neat unfolding of events. And you know, full disclaimer here. I don't know how spooky this one is. It's more of a That's positive fine. story, but sure. it's still something that sort of cemented for me, 
what you know the afterlife is all about and the fact that we do continue on so it was it was actually a very life affirming experience for for me and i think for my husband uh dave too another dave here another guy like you know, keeps it tight on the top too right <laughs> uh, so anyway yeah my uh my mom and her husband second marriage for both of them they were very much in love and they lived in florida they would come up and visit us all the time and we had a great relationship uh, unfortunately my mom's husband wound up uh, becoming ill with cancer and succumbed mm -hmm. very quickly to the disease and uh, my mom was left on her own and she would come up to visit us every once in a while not too frequently but one time shortly after he died we were all sitting in our family room and we have a vaulted ceiling uh, about 15 feet up we have a ceiling fan and it has a light on the bottom of it the only way to turn that light on dave is with a remote that is mounted on a wall and we were sitting in the evening one night probably 10 o'clock at night just kind of winding down the evening and um all of a sudden spontaneously the light goes on in the middle of the room and it's just the three of us sitting downstairs mm -hmm. and without hesitation she looked up and she pointed at that light and she's like hey mike as if it were just you know part of the normal evening um and we kind of looked at each other and we're like what the heck but she just knew it was a sign for him that that he was letting her know that he was all right and uh next morning now, we now come, wait i need to know now is dave a believer at this point or is he just think mom's maybe still dealing with the grieving process you know i'll tell you what uh i was a believer but boy this really affirmed it this was okay yeah all right now all right continue on mandy i, I want to hear where this goes yeah the next morning we came down um and in our dining room we have a china hutch and it it's a lighted hutch but again the only way to turn the hutch on is through a touch pad that's about six feet up in the air so you literally have to reach up and, and touch it to activate it and we came down in the first thing in the morning the light was on in the hutch now again nothing like this ever happened with our home our home was a you know new construction new mm -hmm. electric obviously so we didn't have unusual things like that happen in our house so within you know the course of 12 hours we had two situations where lights just spontaneously came on again we were just like at that point like okay hey mike how you doing um and that that following night i came down in the middle of the night i couldn't sleep we have a little powder room same thing happened there's a motion sensor light in that powder room the light goes on on this motion sensor inside the bathroom the only way to set it off is if you're physically in the powder room just crazy series of events so like okay so some some light anomalies flash forward to about six months later my mom's health declined quickly and i had to go down there to be with her and both my sisters went down she uh she was uh, set up with hospice care so we knew what was coming um, so we were pretty much holding vigil at her bedside and, uh, you know, the time came, it's kind of a little bit hard for me to talk about, but my husband was trying to get in touch with me and maybe I'll let you take it from here. Yeah. So I knew, I knew mom was sick and, um, he's in, he, he's here in Ohio in we were down, and I was in Florida. So okay. I put the kids to bed and turned on the TV and I'm sitting in the great room, same great room with the ceiling fan light and i hadn't talked to mandy in several hours and i'm sitting there and the light went on hasn't happened since that night when her mom was here hmm. and when the light went on i had a feeling that something was wrong or something had happened uh so i started trying to call her and she didn't answer and i said hey call me i'm concerned want to make sure everything's okay uh, so about a half an hour, 45 minutes later, she called me to let me know that mom had passed almost at the exact same time that the light went on. Wow. I'm trying to call her to make sure that everything's OK. And to this day, and that's been how many years? Oh, it's been 2015. So it's been six, seven, years. six, seven years. The lights never we've never had an incident like that with with said light. So mm. just uh. It was an incredible series of events. Yeah, Very and then uh, cool. that that Christmas, it was probably two weeks later, a couple weeks later, I was back home with my family, and my kids were opening Christmas presents, and we saw two 
blue balls of light I saw with my own eyes come they were it was they were both over by my children they came up and they flew right past my head and i got it on my iphone it was just it, just crazy since then Wait, so you you saw this happening with your eyes and then and, caught and it i got your, it on my camera too yeah yeah yeah, wow. yeah. i would have thought it was just lens flare or something because especially with iphones the, with the way that those cameras are you will see little blue you'll you'll see but these were hanging and they weren't moving in the same direction as my camera was moving so um and if i hadn't seen it with my own eyes i probably would, would have just thought that it was just something you know with the with the uh, lenses um that that was just you know just kind of icing on the cake for me to me it was just them saying we're all right we're here we're with you um so just a really special series of events and haven't really had anything happen like that before or since so and I, i'm okay with that that's awesome very cool yeah mandy thank you dave thank you for coming on and sharing a nice little family Thanks. story just before the uh the Thanksgiving holiday. I appreciate it. And uh, keep listening. Now that you found the show, we'd hope that you'll come back and spend a little bit more time with us, kind of like this guy, Eric Folsom. Wow. He's known to pop in from time to time. Uh, Look at that. For a second. I, I got to turn my power on. My, my computer's acting up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hey. jump on to wish him happy birthday and he leaves us. I know. Hey, oh, so are cool. you in the uh, small part of, uh, of your house, it looks like? Uh, I, I'm in my Thanksgiving home. Oh, oh, that's why it oh, doesn't look like the paranormal one. sixty. As exactly. Is, uh, yeah. Okay. Your, your Thanksgiving home. <laughs> you see, you know, his, little, his little getaway. As he Mandy's to talking to us about the great room and ceiling fans, and I just I was living in a different world. You know, my remote control is telling my kid to go turn the light switch on. There you go. Me, but, uh, <laughs> it's reliable though. Very cool. All right, let's get to it. Uh, hey, it must be a, a big night for Texas because uh, we've got some, an, a fellow Texan about to join us. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan, welcome to the program. Thanks for being hey, here. Hey, how are you guys doing? And happy birthday, Dave. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, so you've got some stories of the supernatural to share with us. Oh, do I? You know, owning a okay. haunted building, I get them all the time. Wait, Dan, uh, you own a haunted building? Could you yeah. tell us where it is and what it's called? Yeah, I own the Circa 1886 Old Park Hotel in Ballinger, Texas. And uh, a lot of people... Last six years, we've encountered a lot of things. A lot of people encounter things. Nick's been there, Nick Groff. He's encountered things. I mean, it, it's crazy. It's a crazy building. Um, it, You know, it's one of those places that the moment you let your guard down, it just jumps back at you. Mm -hmm. And some days it's like a roller coaster. You're going up and down. You might be on a low point with the paranormal. Other days you're up on the rise and it's all coming at you like a freight train. Uh, did you know it was haunted when you bought it? Yeah, we actually did. Uh, I investigated paranormal a long time. Uh, came across this article in 2015 at Halloween. We had just moved to West Texas. Didn't know much about West Texas because I grew up in San Antonio. Knew a lot about the rest of the state, but nothing really in West Texas. So I started looking places up and came across this article talking about Ballinger and talking about this very haunted building. And it got my attention and couldn't wait to go up there and see it. Uh, contacted a former owner. She blew me off like you won't believe in the beginning because she was like, <laughs> I'm being contacted by so many people wanting to see this building. Um, it was one of those locations that was very locally known as being very haunted for decades. Um, it just wasn't out there in the mainstream. You know, a lot of stories hadn't been done on it. But everybody in town knew and everybody walked circles around the building. It was basically like that. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, we've been super busy for the last six years. We're like back-to-back -back weekends, you know, on bookends and things. So mm -hmm. we rarely leave the building. We're there all the time. But two weeks ago, we went on a paranormal conference, uh, probably the first one that we've done in years, in Jefferson, Texas. And I, had a, I, I didn't know who to trust the building to, so I had a local friend go in there and run the two groups that we had that weekend. Well, while we were in Jefferson, she starts messaging me about all these things start, start happening to her. From the moment she walked in the door, she heard a disembodied old man's voice, talk to her while she was alone. And of course, a lot of things happen. My story, uh, we got back basically, um, went like a week later. So we hadn't been at the building for like two weeks walking mm -hmm. in fresh again. 
And this time the group was waiting for me. So I walked in, they walked in right behind me. I went into my normal routine to turn on all the lights and that place was spooky, you know, walking around in the dark. And one of them is following me towards the back upstairs where we have our doll room. And it's one of our really, really creepy areas. And I'm literally just going through my routine. I'm not really feeling anything at that moment. And I go to our Bonnie and Clyde theme room and I start to push the door because it's closed and usually the door is open. I start to push it open and right as I do something from the other side pushes from the other side, like somebody is holding the door. Oh no. And, and you see me, I'm a big guy. So I, I lean into the door with my shoulder thinking, Oh, maybe the door's stuck. And as I push, it pushes back. And this person's behind me. They have no clue what I'm experiencing, but I'm not saying anything. And all of a sudden I turn around, I look at him, I go, something weird is happening. And at that moment I pushed in really hard and the door gave whatever it's holding gave at that moment. So I go flying into the room, losing my balance and everything. And right as I do, a hand smacks me across the forehead, like you won't believe. And you could feel the fingers, you could feel the hand. It was like somebody was scolding me. And right as I stood up in the dark of that room, I got the really strong tingling electrical sensation that we feel. It feels, you know, like spider webs just all over you. And my hair was just standing, you know, what little hair I have. It was Such standing a bragger. On... Always got to brag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've it got was... hair and it's standing. Yeah. <laughs> it was standing on end and <laughs> I just had this look on my face. I was just like, wow, you know, there it is again. And the person right, I didn't say anything to the person behind me. And right as I do, she, she takes like three steps back because she could feel it coming out of the room. And the whole area just, you know, filled up with energy. And I looked at her and I said, here we go. You know, and that's usually how we do things there. Very cool. So you get slapped yeah. in the forehead and you're just like, oh, it's just another day at home. Well, here's the funny thing about it. I started thinking about it later. Mm -hmm, I started thinking, mm -hmm. you know, about the background of the whole incident. Well, our place used to be a brothel. And we've had weird instances where sometimes we think they're doing things in the rooms. And I almost felt like I walked in on something. Mm. And it was like they were scolding me. You know, it's like, get out, get out of the room, you idiot. Yeah. You know, that yeah. type of thing. <laughs> All right, Dan, can people awesome. rent this this location and investigate there? Yeah, we've we've shared it from the very beginning because we had a lot of friends in the very beginning. They were like, you need to share this building. It's just popping out things left and right. So we rent it out. We book it out for only three twenty five dollars a night, and we do it on weekends. Very, very affordable. It's 10,000 square feet. We got air conditioning, got heating, got a kitchen. It's a little mix of the modern, but it's mainly old. It's 1886. And the building's gone through a lot of transformations, a lot of interesting cool. history, and a lot of paranormal. Well, everybody, just keep listening because pretty soon you're going to hear about an event that's going to be there. Yeah. And I have it on good authority that at least four members of the Paranormal 60 News Crew are going to be in attendance. Really? Right. Yeah, not hey, me, because I live in Minnesota, <laughs> but uh, you guys are going to have a good time. So, Dan, thanks for coming on and spending Thank some you, time Dave. with us. And uh, what's the website people can find for your web uh, for your location if they want to rent it's it out? It's very simple, just www.oldparkhotel.com. If people have trouble finding it, just Google the name, old with an E, and you'll find out a lot of stuff. All right. Thank you, Dan. Have a good Thank one. Thank you. Happy birthday, Dave. Thank you. Oh, that's very cool. That's cool. You taking the center stage there, Colonel. Hey, man, I got the control here. I, I don't know if you realize that now. Yeah, I'm starting to realize that. Hey, yeah. uh, we've got uh, we got people joining and we've got a lot more stories to uh, cover, a lot more things to get done. Uh, let's go ahead and um, we're going to take one more before we go to a break. Uh, Susan, is it Suzanne or Susan? You have to unmute your microphone for us. There you go. Is it? Hello? Oh, we got a janky connection. Uh -oh. I'm putting you on hold, uh -oh. Susan. I don't know if you want to reboot yourself and uh -oh. come back in. Um, you you froze up on the screen there. We couldn't even hear you. Uh, but I can always hear this guy. He's like an EVP. Wherever I go, I hear <laughs> this ghostly little voice following me along. This is this is my buddy Kevin Swanson. He helped me investigate the Palmer House numerous times. 
many of the pieces of equipment in seasons one and two of the Holzer files, we borrowed and abused and then sent back broken <laughs> to, to Kevin Swanson. Swanee, thanks for being here, buddy. No problem. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Can you turn the, the lawnmower off outside? Oh. <laughs> Sorry if it's too loud. Yeah. No, you're uh, you're good for a few. So, all right, what okay. uh, what weird, strange story of the supernatural did you call in to share with us while you're mowing your yard? <laughs> uh, it, this happened at the Palmer House probably okay. about 10 years ago. Uh, up on the top floor uh, is a kid's room. They call it the kid's mm -hmm. room. And there used to be a mirror that hung on the wall there. And I was investigating, doing an EVP session with a few other investigators. Mm -hmm. And some movement caught my eye around the mirror. And at first it looked like about the size of a baseball, a mist. And it started to grow bigger and bigger. And it got to be about the size of a basketball. And then it like detached itself from the mirror and moved along the wall until it got to one of the other investigators. And I'm just in awe watching this. I have no camera. All we had was an audio recorder. And as this mist hit the investigator, she just shivered and said, I just got the chills. We played back the audio. We got the word cold on the audio recorder. So uh, to me, that's just been one of my standout experiences there at the Palmer House. I know there have been cool. many, many more, but that one has just really stood out to me. And since I've got your attention, Crazy Dave, haunted. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> happy birthday, buddy. Thank so you, glad. Guys. Another trip around the sun for you. And uh, we'll see you on the next investigation. I look forward to it. Kevin just helped me investigate the Lexington over in St. Paul. And we got a lot of EVP, electronic voice phenomena. We got a lot of footsteps shadowy figures moving around that place was hopping and i'm looking forward yeah. i think they want us to come back next year swanee sweet i'll be there all right thank you my friend now maybe he can relax and stop mowing the yard i don't know <laughs> it's a little late to be mowing the, the yard oh wow, man very productive of him yes <laughs> yeah that's him he's a he's a giver a great guy holy cow he's a great guy and he always comes to our palmer house events whether we invite him or not he's just there and uh no he's always set up and he brings a lot of cool toys and and equipment to play with and uh, we capture really crazy stuff. We were doing, he had a, uh, in his room, Raymond's room, he had his whole SLS camera set up in there. And we went in to, to investigate and this like figure appears on the bed, the stick figure. And then it just starts dancing. And it's like disco dancing on the bed. And we were all <laughs> laughing. We're like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> uh, I'll tell a quick funny story with, um, <clears throat> you know, when we were talking uh, with Dan, he was saying how the place used to be a brothel and they capture you know, they hear some weird stuff. Well, we went, uh, Bill Chapel and myself, we went to a location in Colorado, Cripple Creek, Colorado. It's called the St. Nicholas Hotel. Great little location. Got a really weird history and it was run by nuns at one point. It was a hospital. It was, a uh, uh, one floor was for psychiatric patients. The, the, the operating suite is still there, but there's one room where this nun is seen. So we go and we're investigating and we're looking into the room We've got the equipment kind of got a bunch of it laid out on the bed because she's often seen coming and hovering around the bed. So we're thinking the detectors are going to pick something up. We've got the SLS camera pointed towards it. And all of a sudden you see the stick figure walk up to the bed and then it jumps up on the bed and it bends over and it's looking at all of the pieces of equipment on the bed when another figure pops up <laughs> and mounts the first stick figure. Oh, wow. And Bill wow. Chapel goes, what? what are we watching? And I go, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wow. And I think we know what we're porn and normal activity, I think is the correct terminology for it. And then it gets even funnier because after that stops, I send bill in and I'm like, maybe there's a flaw in the camera. It's picking something up. So I send bill in and he walks around and I'm, we're projecting it. So I've got this monstrous screen on the ceiling so I can see every detail. And I go, okay, there's nothing there. Go around the other side of the bed. He goes around the other side of the bed and there's, like a closet door and, and another closet and, or one is a bathroom door. One's a closet. And I tell him, open up the closet door and he opens it up and there's nothing there. He opens up the bathroom door and a stick figure is standing there. And I'm like, Bill, there's mm -hmm. something there something. And I'm like, maybe it's just picking up the door frame. That one vanishes and one appears on the other side of him by the closet. 
Now here's where it gets really bizarre. It walks forward and I go, it's Bill, it's like an arm's length away. Put your arm out. And Bill puts his arm out, not like straight out, not like he's, you know, trying to palm you in the face. He just puts his hand down like you're shaking your hand. <clears throat> this thing turns sideways and then kind of pushes its hip, hips up towards Bill and something pops up. I kid you not. Mm, I, I, this video yeah. footage exists. I'm going to get Bill to send it to me. Uh. And he goes, he goes, <laughs> He goes, it feels tingly. I go, I bet it does, Bill. He goes, what's it doing? I go, I don't think I could tell you. And he goes, what do you mean you can't tell me? I'm like, this is one of those things you're just going to have to see yeah. to believe later on. Yeah. And he's like, well, what is it? Is it touching me? I go, oh, it's touching oh, you, Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, later on, I showed it to him, and we just laughed our asses off for an oh. hour. Uh, he was this crazy specter just put it right in his hand and there it was so that was that's See, one of those that, moments that gives me a warm feeling knowing that when we get to the other side yeah we're gonna have we're that still ability looking, exactly. we're yeah. still looking for love in yeah. all the wrong places yeah that's right no well, that's that's one thing all right guys uh i'll tell you what we have to do here real quick it is my it's alive 55 birthday bash here oh, yeah on the paranormal 60, but, uh, I still have bills to pay. I still got people that I need to take care of just like my buddies over at urban's edge. Sounds dry. Urban's Edge Tattoo Aftercare is the first ethically sourced, all natural, vegan, and organic tattoo care line on the market. All of our products are formulated by leading experts in the skincare industry and are developed especially to nourish, enhance, and preserve your tattoos. Our tattoo enhancing balms are non-greasy and the perfect consistency for daily use. They're absorbent, hydrating, restorative, and are guaranteed to bring life back into your artwork. Visit www.urbansedgetattoo.com to order your starter kit today. That's www.urbansedgetattoo.com. Hey, it's Chris Jericho here just reminding you about the Four Leaf Clover. Chris Jericho's rock and wrestling rager at sea, the fourth voyage, leaving February 2nd from Miami to Great Stirrup Key, our very own private island. This is going to be the biggest and best Jericho cruise ever with the biggest lineup, the most fun, I guarantee it. Come join us for the vacation and the party of a lifetime. ChrisJerichoCruise.com. Cabin's still available. I want to see you there. Haunted Magazine is packed full of the paranormal, stuffed with the supernatural, sautéed with spookiness, garnished with ghosts, and even drizzled with a dash of demons. If you want histories, mysteries, ghost stories, hauntings, weird stuff, freaky stuff, and more supernatural than you can shake a stick at, come and see Haunted Magazine for the world's best paranormal writers. Visit www.hauntedmagazineprintshop.com for your latest scare. Remember kids, don't be normal, be paranormal. Thanks for the reminder, but we're always paranormal here on the Paranormal 60. Listen, we are down to our last 50 of the Paranormal 60 protection and energy bracelets if you would like to obtain yours before they are gone once these 50 are gone they're gone for good just email me dave at paranormal60.com that's dave at paranormal60.com tell me if you want a size seven or like me i wear a size eight and uh, shoot your address and then we will send over an invoice once you pay it we will package it and ship it and you're getting a bonus little gift that's all i'm going to tell you a free $5 value on top of it. So you get the bracelet and a cool little gift. And once these are gone, they're gone. Don't miss out on your opportunity to get the first ever Paranormal 60 Protection and Energy Bracelet. It's going to make a great holiday gift item. So go ahead, message me now, Dave, at paranormal60.com, and I'll get that taken care of right away for you. For all of you on the uh, uh, West Coast, always wondering, when am I coming to California? Well, there's a big party coming, the Fear Fair. 
It is Friday the 13th, Saturday the 14th, Sunday the 15th, three full days of events. Lots of cool stuff going on at the Fear Fair, and you can find information about it at darknessevents.com. That's darknessevents.com, so you can quit whining to me about when am I going to come to California? I'm coming to California. San Bernardino, baby! I don't think I've ever been to San Bernardino, so I'd like you to join me there. Uh, you know who else I'd like to see join me there? I'd like this guy, Eric Folsom, and this guy, the colonel from the Paranormal 60 News crew to join oh, me. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. with the extra money we're making from being on the second show this week, I can probably yeah. it. Yeah, let's get to our next caller. Uh, we've got, <laughs> uh, it looks like we lost somebody that had been waiting. Oh. oh, there she is. She's back in the stream. Suzanne, are you there with us? Mm -hmm. I'm here. Yay. Happy birthday, dude. Oh, thank Hi, you Eric. very I'm much. Ready. Hey, Susan. Is it Susan or hey. Suzanne? Suzanne. 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 Well, welcome Suzanne to the program. Is. Suzanne, you've got a paranormal story to share with us? I do. Um, a okay. few years ago, I was going through, I guess you'd call it maybe a spiritual revival. Okay. And one night, I had a dream. And, and it was it was a pretty seriously horrific dream hmm. and when i woke up i was um i was emotionally uh just i i was a mess i was a hot mess and okay. and this dream was just it was horrible uh it was almost more like a vision and so i'm i'm sitting out in the garage trying to trying to deal with this and not wake everybody uh -huh. up because i have to go to work in a couple hours and and I started praying and I, I asked God to take the vision away that I couldn't deal with it. It was too much. I didn't want it. And nothing was happening. And, and again, I said, please take this away. And then all of a sudden it, it, it was sort of replaced with a new vision of um, what life would be like without, you know, my life could be this way and I would be happy and chipper and shallow and life would be really meaningless, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to deal with this dream anymore. And, mm. and I'm thinking, where, where's this offer coming from? I feel like I'm, you know, at the crossroads in my garage. Um, and I said, no, that's not what I want my life to be. I don't want my life to be shallow and I don't want it to be meaningless and just be mindlessly happy. That's, you know, it's no way to live, right. at least for me. So um, I said, okay, I, I guess I'm just going to have to accept this dream. And um, so I got ready and I went to work and I, I was working at a big box store in town and I worked in the photography lab area <laughs> tells you how old I am. We actually had, you know, <laughs> if you guys know what film is, yeah, and, those are what you go see at the movie cinema, right? Yeah. There you film. go. Oh no, yeah. no, no. We didn't take <laughs> pictures with our phones. What? I mean, who thought we were ever going to take photographs with our phones? What a bizarre how could you thing. Then? Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, so, uh, so I'm working in this, my, my department and I'm still very emotionally keyed up. I'm, I'm still really upset because the, the whole episode in the garage was in the dream and oh my gosh. So um, here I am in the photo area and, and I need to explain this because it's important. Mm -hmm. um, we were missing a wall. It was actually a glass wall. It was a big window. And it looked right out into the foyer and the parking lot. So I'm I'm trying to find things to do. It's Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. There's no customers. And I'm trying to keep busy, keep my mind occupied. And so I'm out dusting film canisters. Again, for anyone who doesn't know what a film, what film is, it's not what you see at the, you know, anyway. So I'm dusting the film canisters and I see a car pull up to the, to the curb and a man gets out and I, and you know, no, it's been ever. He walks in 
and he immediately takes a left into the photo event. And he comes up and he stands next to me and he's kind of look, you know, I'm dusting and he's looking at me and I, I said, you know, good morning. Can, can I help you? And, and he just kind of nods and he smiles and he says, so how are you doing? And, and for some reason, um, I, I didn't just give him the normal, hi, good morning, whatever. I, I right. said, I'm doing better. And he looked at me and he smiled and he said, good, I'm proud of you. And he turned around and he walked back out and he walked out of the store and I watched him and the car was still sitting there and he got in the car and he drove away. So do you think this was an and, angelic encounter? Um, well, I, you know, I I don't know. I'm guessing it's an angel. Um, I, Curiosity's you know, got the best of me. What, what kind of car does an angel know? drive? Um, actually, he had a driver too. There was a guy driving. It was a, it was an older, um, maybe eighties model sedan. All right. So and he, this, he scrolls this, in, in this style. Was not I like that. Mm -hmm. Different looking. Yeah. He he just looked like a normal cool. everyday guy. And did you feel better after he came um, in and you kind of had that very, moment? I, I felt tremendously better. It was like this huge weight was lifted off. Awesome. Um I started calming down. Um and from time to time, I think about it and think, did that really happen? It's like, yes, that, that really happened. That's awesome. He, he came just to ask me how I was and, yeah. Maybe a little reassurance. So I just thought I'd share that. A, That's cool. Very yeah, it's, it's a Thank strange you. story, but but it's a good story. It is. It is. Thanks Let's for share. having That's me. right. Oh, Thank yeah. you for celebrating my birthday with me. We appreciate that. Dave, oh, nice. Yes. Could I just take a moment here? Um, this is a little mm -hmm. bit different than the uh, Paranormal 60 newscast. Yes. Uh, there's a lot less drinking on this show. Yeah. Um, and and if, if any time we should be drinking, it's during Dave Schrader's birthday. Exactly. exactly. Are you sure there's well, less drinking? Uh, I'm too high noon thin, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> you are 55. So yeah. let's take a quick moment here to say happy birthday and cheers to Dave. Cheers Thank you, to friend. Dave. Mm -hmm. Thank you to everybody tuning in and spending a little time with us. And uh, for those of you in the chat room, there's a lot of comments being made. I'm going to throw you up here as we, as we, I shouldn't talk about drinking and then throwing up. It's wrong connotation, but <laughs> that was the, we will, um, yeah, we will, uh, we'll bring you back in. We've got a lot of cool people uh, still left to chat with us. Let's go. I think it's Mariah. Am I saying that right? Mariah? Yep. That Hi, Mariah. is correct. Well, that is welcome to the show. Welcome. Yeah. And I've got my son with me too. Oh, he wanted cool. to eat and wish you a happy birthday too. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. How are you doing? But what's his name? His name is Arnold. Arnold. That's a great, strong name. Yeah. Arnold, good to see you, buddy. Yep. <laughs> All yep. right. What's your uh, what's your uh, your paranormal story for us, Mariah? Um I, my uh I grew up doing community theater and okay. you hear all the stories, theaters haunted, whatever. But I'm in the light booth, and there's only one other person in with me, and the door opens, and there's nobody there. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's strange. And there is always this one part of this building that I ain't going under there. I ain't going under the stage. <laughs> For a show, I had to climb under the stage, and <clears throat> I'm like, okay, let's hurry up and get to where I need to go because I'm not going to be back here. And then also the day that my dad had passed away, I was home. I was supposed to have been at work. They never called me with my schedule. Okay, hmm. I'll just stay home. My mom calls on the phone and is like, hey, I need you to tell my daughter that her dad passed away to my uncle. Oh, you can tell her she's right here. Whoa, wait a minute. She's supposed to be at work. And the same thing had happened five years earlier with my grandma. 
Wow. Very strange. Very cool. Do you have a lot of things happen regarding the paranormal around you? Printer time. Um, no. Like one time I was in a group of people. We were sitting in a room and it was really quiet. Um, and we somebody comes in and says, oh, this is the quietest group that we've ever had in the area. Quietest. There's like whispering all over the place. What are you talking about? <laughs> Nobody else had heard them. Yikes. Oh, that was... Mm. Very cool. Mariah, thank you so much for coming on and spend a little thank bit of time. You. Arnold, and great to meet you, Arnold. <laughs> yeah, Take care, buddy. Great to meet you. Hey, happy birthday, Dave. Thank you very much, Mariah. We appreciate it. We appreciate everybody popping in. And uh, we've got, we'll do this again more often. I like this. I like having people join us and share their stories of, of high strangeness and supernatural shenanigans. Uh, I got to make sure when I'm I'm sending these people away, I'm not actually hitting the ban button. So <laughs> we don't need I apologize. That. <laughs> Thank you for your yeah. story. I don't hey. want to hear from you again ever here. <laughs> That's but right. Real fast. Happy oh wait, yes. Hi. Hey Happy Donna, birthday. how you doing? <laughs> Thank you, Donna. And hello, my fellow darklings. <laughs> nice. Great hey. shirt, Donna. Nice. Great shirt. I like that is it. A great shirt. So, oh. War just for you, Dave. Got ghosts. I like it. All right. So what's your uh, what's your paranormal story for us? So I already emailed you this morning, but I'll I'll tell you again. So about 30 years ago, when I was still in college, um, I was starting to figure out I was a bit, you know, on the sensitive side. And some of my friends were like-minded and they decided to take me out on a field test. So okay. we went out to Cahos, New York, where there was an abandoned church across from the city hall. So my friends decide to stay by the city hall and I walk across the street and, um, you know, go to this. Now this church is kind of in a horseshoe configuration. So this, the church is on the one side and the parsonage is on the other with this alleyway in between. And I go down the alleyway and about midway, all of a sudden the church lights up in neon blue for me. And my friends confirmed for me that that actually had happened. And it was a very strong, energy surge is the best way to put it um and the old terminology you would say it's the ley lines so um that's what happened so it kind of set up a barrier for me so i start heading back away from it out of the alleyway and as i do so something catches my eye in the second floor parsonage and i look up and there's this little girl blonde hair with a white nightgown and she's looking at me and i'm looking at her and I start walking around towards the front of the parsonage and she follows me through the wind. You know, basically I could see her through the windows as I'm walking along to the front of the parsonage. And I go to the other side of the parsonage and she's following me there too. So I come back around again to the front and she, uh, you know, she looks at me and then she just gradually disappears. And a couple of my friends had actually seen it from across the street. They were, they were stunned. And a couple of years later, another set of friends, I'm at a party and we're all talking and whatnot. And somebody in the uh, crowd, basically, you know, the, the word Silliman came up. That's the name of the church, the Silliman Presbyterian Church. So I perk up and I proceed to hear that, I guess, about a century ago, uh, one of the ministers, his niece had died from, I guess, influenza or something in the parsonage. And she was about mm -hmm. six years old. You know, so I mean, uh, you know, my jaw dropped to the floor and then I wound up telling them what had happened that I had actually seen her. That is awesome. Very cool. So you've been having experiences, though, for a long time in your life. Yeah. Um. I mean, I had started early, like in my teenage years. I mean, actually, it started mm -hmm. um, when I was around 12. I had actually had a near death experience in an, in an operation. And it actually also was a family gift. My father could, you know, was a meet, was sensitive and mediumship. My grand, his mother, et cetera, et cetera. So it just, I've dealt with the good, the bad, and the ugly for a good long time now. <laughs> yeah, that's the three of us: the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'll let you decide which one is which, Donna. <laughs> oh, thank you for I being a part. Hi to Eric and Marty for a change, other than in the chat. <laughs> well, it's good to have you here. Thank you, Donna. Have a great rest of your Thanks, night. Donna. Thanks, Thanks. And I'll tell you what, I'm seeing a lot of people are like, hey, we're loving the format. Th Listen, I don't know how much paranormal news we're going to dig out the day after Thanksgiving. So for those of you that would be interested that are in the chat room now or listening, if you have a story you'd like to share with us on Friday night, 
uh, just email me, Dave at paranormal60.com. I'll send you out a link and, and uh, you'll be able to join in like everybody's doing tonight. So if you want to share a heartwarming or a scary experience with the supernatural, maybe you were abducted by aliens or got lost with a Bigfoot, maybe Chupacabra is your neighbor. Uh, just let us know. We'd love to hear your stories and you can come back on with us on Friday night and we'll share some more stories for Thanksgiving. Th How about stories to be thankful for? It'll be horror stories to be thankful for. There you I go. Like yeah, whatever like like, you just said, it could be heartwarming. A year older and a year wiser. Look at you. Yeah. Wow. Bit. I'm trying. Yeah. So wow. if you'd like to be a part of the show, email me, Dave at paranormal60.com. We're going live this Friday night, 9 p.m. Live. to 10 p.m. Ish. Or Ish. 11 -ish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll check that out. I will say, guys, a quick little uh, note. I got a lot of notes today for my birthday. Most of them say how much they love you guys and that you're a part of the show uh, and really enjoy the camaraderie, the fun that we bring to this and that we all show our love for the paranormal and one another in such unique ways. And, and it's a lot of fun. So I just want to let you know, we're getting a lot of great feedback. A few people hate you, so we might have to remove you. But, uh, you know, I just want to let you know, there are people that do like you, though. Is that why Greg's not on tonight? <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you telling us something here? Greg was on last night with me. He came on the show last night. So you guys what? are here tonight. I threw what? him an invitation. He's busy. He's a paranormal detective, guys. Yeah. yeah he, he got, He's got oh. stuff to do. Yeah. All right. We are getting into, um, we have three guests left, and then we're going to wrap it up for tonight. And two of them come from foreign lands. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, our friend Cindy, she is back. She was with us I don't, a couple months back when we started doing the shenanigans, and she's back with us tonight. Cindy Brown, welcome back. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Hey, you Good doing? to have you. And you come from the far off land of Kentucky. Am I right? Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Way out there. And, and Germany. And Germany. Either one. Yeah. 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 The Take German side of Kentucky. Yeah. So you've got a new story to share with us tonight. Yes. Actually, I got. Um, I be part of a paranormal team, which actually great happened when I went to the darkness events last year and I got to meet the founder of Riverside Iowa Paranormal, which is Michelle Ruth. Mm -hmm. And so I be part of the Indiana chapter. So my story is I got actually came in contact with the not so nice part of the paranormal, which is more side the evil, like inhuman, I could say, part. Um, we went to an infamous cemetery, uh, Brittany, which is part of the Indiana chapter. And myself, we were, she took me to a cemetery, which technically was, it was a weird shape. It was like surrounded by trees. It was like a circle. Mm -hmm. And it was known that there were rituals being done. The um, headstones of those graves were destroyed in earlier years. Mm. So there was a lot going on. Uh, walking into this like kind of um, portal, it felt like walking into a portal. And it was really strange because as soon as you walked in there, you lost completely track of time. And that's what happens to us here every Friday night. Yeah. Yeah, we lose track of time and reading abilities. <laughs> All right, so yeah. you're in the cemetery, you lose track of time, you're kind of like like you're almost in a whole nother world. Yes, it really mm -hmm. felt like like com completely like out of time. And it was heavy. It was really dark. It was like you could feel spirits spirits or entities around you. You couldn't point them out to a point because they were moving. So in the area, so we heard like a baby cry like just once it was really like in the time of getting dark so it was still some light but dark and kind of something told me okay stuff is really going to like start to get intense and yeah there it was it was really <laughs> starting like the spirit started to move the energy got heavier and heavier and all of a sudden i saw a big black like crawler i really saw it with my own eyes it had legs like an elk kind of like with the joints mm -hmm. short front front legs or arms i should say i don't know it was kind of weird and above a black mass like like that moved both from the right to the left and i was like i was talking to my friend and she was like okay i saw that too like we kind of both saw it 
And she's like, yeah, it's, there has been a lot of crawlers like in that area. And I actually got to see it. And after that, something told me, okay, it doesn't feel right anymore. We need to leave. So we started to walk towards the exit, which was a little path. Like it was just a little door. It was grown in from the trees. You walked literally into a portal. So we walked to this little entrance and then all of a sudden I started to feel like running because it felt like they came all behind us. And it was really like that. We ran both through this little threshold, turned around, looked back, and they all were lined up. Like they didn't cross. They didn't come over to our like realm, I should say, but they were all lined up looking at us as we said, do not follow us because you're not allowed to follow us. You have to stay where you are. And literally, I saw them all lined up looking at us. I mean, that was like, that was my, so I kind of came in contact with the evil side of the paranormal. You think it was some sort of cryptid, Cindy? I think so. Yes, it was definitely not human. There was no way. It was like really strange. The main part that pointed out was pitch black and the elk kind of back legs with the joints. That was really what it was, and the short fronts. I don't know. It's like. Mm. Sounds more like almost like an elemental creature of some mm -hmm. sort. Yeah. Yes, Very weird. Like... Thank you, Cindy. Very cool. Thank you. You know, it's me. interesting. I appreciate it. I, I, there's a place called Bachelor's Grove Cemetery that's very famous in the Chicagoland area. Uh, a lot of people have seen things there. The fo photograph of the weeping woman, a Bachelor's Grove Cemetery. We've talked about it on the show before. Profound place. And I finally got to go there as an adult to investigate it. But I went there with a bunch of teenage friends, probably 1988, 89. It was not such a good place to visit at that time. And you have to go down this kind of wooded road to get to it. And it's really creepy. And I remember we're talking and we start hearing things skittering around in the woods. Again, not an outdoors guy and not, not a fan of it. But as we're standing there, this thing goes crawling quickly across the road in front of us. And it looked monstrous it didn't look like um like an animal unless it was severely deformed and it was big it was i would say it was like a like a mountain lion size but it was this kind of black amorphous thing that just kind of across the street and then was gone and i remember stopping and i <laughs> looked at my friends they looked at me and we're like we're out of here turned around yeah. never got the bachelor's grove cemetery i'm a, I don't know if it's a demon. I don't know if it's some kind of wild ass creature out here or, or what we just witnessed, but that was enough to turn about four or five teenage boys around pretty yeah, quickly. So it sounds like we may have encountered the same kind of weird elemental creature, Cindy. Sounds like it. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Thank you very hey. much for coming on tonight. Thank, Thank you for having you. me. Good to see. You. And hopefully we'll bump into each other again sometime in 2023. Would be great. Thank you so much. Cindy's great. She's such a sweetheart and, and a great uh, support for the show. She's always out there promoting it and talking nice. And when I was out in Vegas earlier this uh, was it this year, last year, she stopped by to say hi. So she just uh, her and, and her husband, just great people, sweethearts. Uh, let's see what else we've got going here. Uh, Nikki, Nikki Wilson is with us. Nikki, hi. welcome to the show. Happy birthday, doing? Dave. Hey. Thank you, you so much. Okay. Oh, yeah. You're coming in yeah. loud and clear. How you doing, Nikki? Good. I'm trying to think Good. of, I go to so many places. You already know I've been to a lot of places. Probably mm -hmm. one of the coolest was um, Sarah Blackroom in Farnsworth House, Gettysburg. Okay, sure. Um, that one, The there's a little boy that died uh, in that room. He died in the bathroom. It used to be his nursery. He got hit actually by a horse carriage outside and mm -hmm. they brought him up. His bedroom was now, what is the bathroom? It was his bedroom back then. Anyways, um, he is known to shake the bed, and he actually does to the point where I had to ask him to please be nice. I need to get some sleep after a while. Not vigorously, but just like a little kid would do, kind of. Yeah, giving you that nudge. little shake to let you know yeah. he's there. Yeah, just a little nudge. So I had that yeah. happen. Um, a lot of bed stuff at the Brown Hotel in Louisville. Mm -hmm. Same thing. I had somebody... Uh, I was there with the bestie Annie and uh, we were investigating the room. We had stuff out and stuff was going off on my bed, not hers as much. So we were in different beds and something sat on the bed and woke me up in the middle of the night. And I'm a person that 
even though I'm a believer, sometimes I'll be like, all right, prove it to me again, you know, and I go back to sleep and it does it again. I'm like, kind of sit up, let it know and go back one more time. And the third time it happens, I'm like, okay, thank you. I give them the acknowledgement. Thank you. But I need to go to sure. sleep. Yeah. It's always bed stuff. Um, same thing with my apartment, which is why I'm a paranormal investigator. Uh, my apartment building is haunted. You can either move or embrace it. So I wanted to see what else was out there. Um, so <laughs> I've had stuff like knock on my closet door in my bedroom. And I'm like, can you do it again? Because that's what we do. We <laughs> ask for them to do it again. So I'm like, can you do yeah. it again, please? But when it did it this time, now I have a New Yorker bed. So it's like the short kind of bed, no box spring in between. I felt two knocks underneath the bed. Oh, no. <laughs> No so way. then I just did one of these, thank you, and went <laughs> back to bed. <laughs> so, I mean, I sage my house with all the places that I go to. I do the paranormal tours at the Sheboygan Asylum, so I want to make sure nothing comes home with me. It's all good stuff here, but I have a lot of fun even at my apartment. There's always a story to tell. <laughs> it's, always fun when it's, it's always fun when it's bed stuff, Nikki, not when you're getting knocked down flights of stairs. And, yeah. right, when they're just giving you a little gentle nudge in the bed and knocking around the closet the door. I haven't yeah. been scratched or punched or anything yet. I go into it with light and love, so hopefully they get that. <laughs> hey, I go in with light and love, and I end up with lumps and bruises. Your, yeah. So, but, um, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Well, Nikki, uh, thank you. Uh, quick question. So you sage. Yes. Now, I've, I heard an interesting deal, and I see our buddy uh, Sarah is, uh, Paranormal Sarah's in the waiting room as well. I'm going to talk to her about this. But so sage has always been something I'm not real sure about, right? I'm, I'm not, mm -hmm. How does that really work? But um, I was reading recently, somebody said, yeah, all these idiots are sage in the inside of their houses, but leaving the doors and windows closed, and all they're doing is trapping the demons and ghosts I in the house. I open them. I do open you? them. I open them when I do it. And I can tell you I have certain because I have the SLS cam and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I have certain spirits that are always here and they are of light and love because the sage will eliminate the bad. And I can tell you, I will take out my SLS cam and do a roll call and I'll be like, you OK over there? And they raise their hand like we're OK, you know, so the ones that and there's only a couple, but the ones that are of light and love seem to hang around. So I don't obviously sage or wear protector, protection crystals before an investigation, just after in case anything right. follows me home. So protect all the ones that are here that are of light and love. <laughs> See, I, like I said, I was never quite sure about the whole sage thing. And I was actually yeah. at an event at the Hoover House this year. And my friend uh, Stacy, who runs uh, Urban Edge, she does the, the tattoo balms and everything. She also does these... Um, infused oil sprays and i there was just there was somebody at this house that was really kind of vibing very icky very dark energy and i mentioned it to her and she took me around the corner and sprayed me with this smudge spray which smelled much better than smudge usually does yeah hits me with the smudge spray i walk <laughs> around the corner this this person i kid you not weirdest thing i've ever seen this person standing there looking at stuff and all of a sudden he just kind of lifts his head up and turns and walks out of the room walks to the front door out the front door gone Nobody wow. saw him again. It was the weirdest. And it was, wow. I don't know. If, like, I don't know if like the smell was offensive to him. No, I think you're clearing the energy dark. on both sides, Dave. You're clearing yeah. the energy on both sides. Blocking the I negative. I do that at home a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Clear energy. laughs> Eric energy. shared a room with me. He knows I can clear energy in a room real quick. Uh, <laughs> Nikki, thanks a lot for sharing your stories. Absolutely. And, and happy birthday, Dave. Thank you very much. Dave, very did you nice. think you were going to hear bedroom stories on your birthday? I, it's so funny, right? Because when she was talking about this, I was I was going to come on right now and say, I just would like to address all three of us and say, gentlemen, well done. So far, we heard stories about blue balls floating around in a room, activity taking place only in the bed, and neither one of you flinched throughout any of it. So congratulations. This is a different kind of show, Dave. Yeah. 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 This is, this is this definitely a, a different show. kind of show. <laughs> it's a birthday well, ladies show. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's time we go to the land down under. Wow. Our friend Anne is there here. She is. Anne. Good eye, everyone. How you going? Good. Thank you very much for joining us. And I heard you're joining me in Germany this year. Germany. I uh, am. And I'm dragging the husband along as well. We can't wait. Roman, good to see you guys. It'll be exciting to have you back. Yeah, we're, we're very much looking forward to it. He hasn't actually been on an international holiday since the last Ireland trip so that we did with you. So, uh, I mean, I Excellent. bugger off with Renata all the time and go right. overseas, but I've got to take the husband occasionally. 
I like it. Well, I know we've always had cool experiences, and I, I'm I got to tell you, we got to connect in the next couple of days. And I want to come back to Australia. I want to go to the quarantine station with you, and I want to have more weird experiences. And I want to bring all of our listeners that you want like to have attend. weird experiences with me, or just oh yeah, oh god, we're taking oh, she oh, takes oh, it. Hey. leave it to the woman that brings it to the <laughs> going into that show. We were so show good all so show. Long. I know. <laughs> Mm. I always take it down a notch. <laughs> yeah, that, that you do. Thank you. Um, yeah. Now now you know why Roman has to uh, go with her. It's part of the rider for me to allow her on our trips. Uh, somebody, are those the hellhounds baying? <laughs> That's my hellhounds. Of course, the cleaners were coming at 3.15, and um, they now just arrived at the door. But wow. I'll, I'll quickly tell you my uh, ghost story, okay. if you'd like. It's about Maitland Jail, yes. which I'm hoping to get you to, Dave. And maybe Eric would like to come visit too. Who knows? Oh, and, and not you, Marty. Not, not, not you, Marty. See, but Marty. Marty. I've got to see. I'm out. <laughs> um, now, this particular tour, uh, we were running the tour that night. So I had the keys to the jail and I opened the jail and I closed the jail. So I saw every single person that came into the jail that night. Uh, we were divided up into two groups and my husband Roman took one group and I took the other group. Now we move from different locations and give the people different experiences. And as I was walking from a block around the corner to go towards C block, which is the creepiest of all the blocks, I looked ahead and I saw that there was somebody walking in the dark without a flashlight on, on their own. I thought, Oh, they've got away from the tour. That's not good. They don't have a flashlight trip hazards, thinking insurance. Uh, and then I just turned around to make sure my tour group was coming behind me. I turned around to say to this, person you don't have your flashlight just wait and they had disappeared and at that same moment my husband came through the other end of the jail where they would have had to have got, gone and I, I yelled out to Roman did you just see that person he's gone no I haven't uh, and this person was as solid as you or me they were about five foot five they had a leather bomber jacket on they had uh khaki sort of uh cargo pants they had a, a ball patch on top and a bit of a rat's tail plait going down the middle of their back and that that's how clear it was to me and i raced in there to see all the jail cells to see if somebody had run off down a corner somewhere and there was nobody there again I opened and closed the jail. I know who was within the jail that night. That person was not on the tour. Very weird. Uh, yep. Very weird. All right. Well, that's awesome. All right. So Maitland, how close is that to quarantine? Can we do that all in one trip? Uh, it's a two hour, about two, uh, two and a half hour drive. Perfect. These guys, we're used to doing six, eight hours in a bus sometimes to get from one location 12, to another one. We're in four sometimes. Thirteen, <laughs> so, naked, uphill in a snowstorm. Oh, I, no, I did yes. Romania Those are with my you. favorite trips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool, and thank you so much for uh, getting up. Yeah, three fifteen no in the afternoon, right? Yeah, thank you for being here, you time traveling nut. <laughs> that's cool good to see and all right we have got time for one more guest and uh joining us a good friend of ours paranormal sarah it's been a while since i've seen her sarah what? soderland she is back sarah welcome to the paranormal 60 happy birthday man thank you man it's happy good to birthday. see you i was gonna do happy birthday mr but you know, no, I didn't, no. I didn't, that didn't work out so good for JFK. <laughs> Let's yeah. avoid that. So I stopped and then I decided I wasn't going to do that. And so I didn't do that. How are yeah. you guys? I'm doing good. Well. Yeah. Good. So what's, I have... uh, what kind of weird story do you have to share for us? And I'm, while you're doing that, I'm going to pull up something here to share oh, before we pull say up. goodnight. So, Not out. Yeah. Um, all sorts of weird stories, all sorts wow. of weird stories. We're uh, going. But recently <laughs> yep. guys, mm -hmm. I did have something weird happen, which to be okay. paranormal, Sarah, and mm -hmm. have something be mm -hmm. weird to work as a forensic counselor with sex offenders by day and have something weird happen by night. Mm. It was weird. It's got to really be impactful then. To, it to was say impactful, it was Dave. Yeah, um, yeah. And for me to share it with you and, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, not to, to put it out there in another way, but uh, I had my first experience with like an object coming out of nowhere, which mm -hmm. I don't know if I consider that a ghostly thing or if I need to be doing like a, a Streber moment or like, this is an alien right. portal Stargate thing. Right. But right. I was there talking about, I was talking about dead people like I do every Tuesday. And I was talking and all of a sudden something fell 
it was an item that I had specifically put in my jewelry box that I didn't want my son to steal from me. That was mm-hmm. sentimental in nature. And it just plopped right out on the, like from the ceiling. And so it, it actually aborted? scared, right? Okay. Where I have a ceiling fan that's like spinning actively on. I keep all my fans on, consider it a, sure. yeah. you know, a thing. And uh, mm-hmm. it just plooped right down on my table, right, right where I was talking, like right near my pen and pencil and my coffee in the middle of broad daylight. And I can't, mm. I and can't explain it. Plooped, I mean, there was no weird before. There's no strange growling, but like, that's what no. I got going on in my dining room. That's uh so what are is it something now you're medium you're a mediumistic person, you're sensitive. Do you feel like <sighs> this is something you should be careful of? Uh, something you should no. be concerned about? What uh, what's the take? You know, Dave, the demons and the spirits, they've never worked for me. They just kind of work mm. around me. And so I feel mm-hmm. like when it's information that I need for myself, it's usually meant to be an exploration. Okay. I was talking about my dead mother. I both want to and don't want to think that it was her. It was an item of hers. So like logically, I would think it's probably associated to her, but it could be something else. You never know for certain. I think that's what. Or has your child figured out a way to turn invisible because he was not going to let you stop him? See, that's what I love about you, Dave. I'm always thinking thinking outside the box. I'm a thinker. I'm a thinker. You're a thinker, you're a farter, you're a doer, you're a strange man. Wow. But that absolutely All those could be. in one box. It's a oh, hell of a compliment box. on your birthday, Dave. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that it is. I got to, I got, you guys don't mind if I process that for a few minutes to you guys. Yeah. Kind of, but no, that's all I wanted was just to say that, you know, I've always been a fan. I've been honored to be your friend. And I'm so thankful to see you bright and bushy tailed on another birthday. And, you know, Hopefully Wait, are you really cool are you thrilled or astonished? Oh my God, he's still the alive. Both? Well, this we've had so many miracle. lives together, Dave. So many I years. Know. How much longer can we be vampires without people knowing? Mm, um, not nearly enough. I know it's not nearly enough, and so it's just one of those things where I I hate to tell people that I've known you for years and years because that would be weird. But it has been some time, and I look forward to our future crazy endeavors because you always find the weirdest weirdest places on the planet now yeah i want to know where you're going next and to be able to follow you is an honor so happy birthday events.com darkness events everybody they know where to watch for me yeah and let's get you on the show we got to talk some weird stuff i want to talk ghosts and serial killers or something with you i want to get you back on absolutely thank you sarah and how can people find you in your show let them know oh paranormal sarah.com google paranormal sarah you'll find me i'm there what a great name, man. Where did you come up with a moniker Some like weird Caramel Sarah? bald man out of the... Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Connection <laughs> tonight, you know? Oh, you know, oh this is, it must be that ghost child thing that's going on. Guys, before we go, it wouldn't be a birthday for me without playing one of my very favorite videos. And uh, since a few people were attempting it, I feel it's really only... It's only fitting if the right person were to share this message. So, ladies and gentlemen... From one of my dearest friends ever, Jeff Belanger, and a little birthday message for me. This one goes out to you, Dave. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. Schrader. Happy birthday to you. Oh, isn't that beautiful? That, that yeah. Is it me or did he look kind of like Kurt Kobe? <laughs> yeah, he looked like. <laughs> did, he, did he look like Nirvana? On... This one goes out to you, Dave. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Like Bruce Valanche and, and uh, Kurt Cobain had a child. This and right. we just got to watch him sing to me. Uh, that is one of my favorite videos he sent me. I'm sure I'm going to get a negative call for playing that. But uh, I wanted to to do that. Guys, before we go, uh, a few minutes left. It wouldn't be a show with you two if we didn't go a little over. And we're a little over, but I want to go a lot over. Uh, Marty, you've seen a lot of cool places. You've had a lot of weird experiences with us. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite strangest paranormal experience yet? Um, I tell you what, you know, mm-hmm. uh, we were just recently over in Butte, Montana, 
Mm -hmm. and you and I were at the brothel. And uh, it, it well, let's let's clarify this. We were we were at the Dumas we were, brothel, we were which is not a, a functioning. Yeah. We were at a brothel, and uh, <laughs> I was getting so jealous for a moment. <laughs> okay. How did you do that without moving your mouth? You're out of sync. That is really weird. All right, uh, and, go uh, for it. Oh, and mm -hmm. we were down in the basement, and uh, man, we were getting some weird stuff. I I actually it was the first time I really actually felt okay, there's something behind me and I don't see it, but I feel it. And so, uh, I would have to say that's probably one of the, one of the up there, uh, experiences. Well, how about that? Yeah. While we were there and we started, we whipped out, a. uh, <laughs> excuse me. Well, I well, whipped, uh, we whipped the out a spirit box, mm -hmm. uh -huh. right? We had the spirit box and we were trying to talk to the, uh, former madam who had passed away, right. Ellen or not. And remember, we're talking, and all of a sudden, very clearly, the spirit box goes, Eleanor, not. And boom, right then and there. That was pretty cool. Pretty and, spectacular. And, and I'm doing the I'm doing the thing when you're on a plane and you're looking at the stewardess to make sure we're still okay. I'm looking at yeah. Dave like he, he doesn't seem shocked about this. So I think we're gonna still live this night yes. through. Yeah, but uh, Look at Eric, unfortunately bailed out. He decided not to share. He decided not to share, yeah. Scariest. I will, I, you know, I'll share it for him. I think this is one of our, our, our best times. We were out doing a trip in Ireland. Uh, oh, wait, no, here he comes. Let's see if I can bring him back in. Eric. There he is. <laughs> All right, tell us your uh, weirdest paranormal story. I'll, you tell it, and I'll tell the one I thought you were going to tell. So go for it. What's your weirdest experience we've had on one of our trips? Oh, that has to be... Uh, gosh, what was the name of the place we went to? It was at like one o'clock in the morning. Brothel? Mm -hmm. It wasn't no. a brothel. This is before we met you, Marty. So this was <laughs> okay. no brothels involved. Yeah, we, were, we were still keeping it classy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what, Dave, do you know what I'm talking about? Forgive me. Uh, I do, but I, I can never remember the name of the place either. Oh, forgive me. All I know is we were standing there. Um, oh, I'm going to change my story. What do you think of that? Okay, go I'm for it. Change it. Nope. Well, the All better right. one was when well, we were in Bambi Myers is calling us out. I know this is live, but you need to also interact with us that are watching. <laughs> Bambi, I am, but it's hard. I'm fighting a cold. I'm bouncing between messages. I've got all these people I got to check. I'm sorry, Bambi. We do appreciate you being here with us. And for those of you, um, what time on Friday? Every show, 9 o'clock to 10 p.m. Central. That's 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Mountain, 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific. And for those of you on the East Coast, it's late 10 p.m. to 11. So that's how you can always keep up with us. And again, if you want to join us for this Friday show and tell your stories because you missed out today, we'll do it for a special spectacular Thanksgiving show as well. Uh, just email me, Dave at paranormal60.com, Dave at paranormal60.com. And in, in, a, in a day or so, I will send you the link so that you can join us and be a part of it. I can't send it to you. I should have let him tell the story. He got knocked offline again. Um, I, I, uh, I won't be able to send it to you until probably, uh, Friday morning, but then you'll be able to join us right back here where we can uh, share our stories and be a part of it. Um, oh, good. Look, a day in the life of Jeff says I'll pop in Friday, Friday. I'm emailing you now. Thank you, Jeff. Look forward to hearing from you. All right. So here's a story I think Eric was going to tell, uh, maybe the one that he chickened out of. So we're at this old church, right? And, uh, there's all kinds of really weird stories and, we know that they've got this guy that's kind of darting around because he's part of our tour group, this this guy who's meant to jump out and scare you. Well, he finally makes his presence known, and we're all standing there. Eric and I have our back to the dark hallway behind us. Everybody else is out in front, and we're standing there chatting. And Eric still, this is one of his first trips. He's not a big believer. And all of a sudden, we very clearly hear footsteps come walking up behind us, and Eric and I, both look and there's nobody there and we both just kind of separated on the sidewalk so whatever was there could pass between us and that was that that holy beep moment that we shared together which was great so uh that was a cool one and then in romania one of the cool uh, we were staying in an old hotel um and i think we we're in uh Sigishwara, which i believe is the birthplace of vlad dracul the you know uh, vlad the impaler and i was sleeping and woke up to something sitting on my bed with a start I was just like, boom, and I woke up, and you could see the depression in the bed. Something just with me. Crazy stuff. But we've always had cool experiences when we've been out on the road doing these events. A lot of fun. If you want to join me, we're going to Germany and Prague later on this uh, 2023, Egypt in February 2023. So it's going to be cool. We're going to have uh, a lot of good times together. 
Uh, all right, we'll try it, Chachi. One last chance for you, Chachi. You're back. <laughs> it is. I You're told the story about you and I with our back to the church hallway. and That's the one I was going to tell. That was the first one. Uh, yeah. Right? The second one I was going to tell was when we were in okay. that jail. I forget what jail it was. And it was the first trip we were on. Ireland, Scotland? Scotland, right? Okay. And yep. we were in the jail. And mm -hmm. we went into the most haunted room. And I was not mm -hmm. a believer at this point. Uh, I was just along because my wife was in love with Dave Schrader. Um, and wow. so we went on the trip. And uh, we shut the, I shut the door. And I said, we are not leaving until I have proof of ghosts. And I figured we're going to be there six, eight weeks at least, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were going to go in overtime on Dave's trip. Mm -hmm. Well, turn on Dave's recorder. We start asking it questions. I didn't know how this worked. We asked the question, dead silence, asked the question, it sounds. Okay. We come back. Is there anybody in the room with us here? Clear as day. Yes. And I just looked around. <laughs> okay, let's go. We now. said, What's your yep. name? Was the second question. And he came back, Grant, like Grant, Grant, Grant. in Scottish. Yeah. I opened the door. I left when got back on the bus. That was enough for me. I learned. Mm -hmm. And ever since, I've been somewhat of a believer. Somewhat. <laughs> I like that. Kind of somewhat. Myself. I love that. Uh, again, be a part of the show this Friday. Uh, we're all going to be live. It'll be Greg, Marty, myself, Eric Folsom, the Chachi. He'll be here. And we're going to be doing news stories, the few that I'll be able to dig up. But we also want to hear your story. So if you have a cool paranormal story, it can be heartwarming. It can be funny. It can be weird. It can be UFOs, ghosts, Ouija board, whatever kind of weird phenomena has taken place in your life. We want to hear about it. And you can do that simply by emailing me, Dave, at paranormal60.com. That's Dave at paranormal60.com. Okay. Is there something, Eric? Are you trying to gain you the like floor's that? attention? I'm learning how this whole Zoom thing works. Yeah, this is uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah. Um, I noticed in the chat earlier a number of people mentioning, Dave, when are you coming to Texas? Mm -hmm. I did too, Eric. That was really observant. Talk about interacting with the, the, the comments. Yeah, the, the, Looks yeah, like March. Looks like March. Um, I may be coming to Texas for an event at Dan's location. Mm. In uh, What's the name of that town? What's the name of that town again? Ban it, uh, uh, a little more. Texas? Blah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's it. Just just map quest it. You'll find it. Yeah, map quest it. Uh, so very <laughs> cool. Uh, I'm hoping to make it for that, and uh, we'll get a chance to get out there and see these guys, and they're going to be a part of it with me. So awesome. That'll be just keep checking darknessevents.com. I'm always adding new events, new locations I'm going to be at throughout the year. Thank you, all of you in the chat room, up to the damn near 200 of you in there tonight. Thank you so much awesome. for being here. Awesome. Being a part of the interaction with the show. I'm sorry we don't always get to you. We do our best. But thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. And on Friday, we'll open it up to questions from the chat room as well. So if you want to be a part of the show, email me, Dave, at Paranormal60. You got to be available at 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central to do this and be a part of it. Uh, that's about it, guys. I, I got nothing more. You guys got anything else you want to say before we head out? I have Just... one last toast to make. All right. Oh, a little bit left, if you can see uh -huh. here. Last toast of the night. I learned this when I was on a trip with you to ireland i believe okay. i was in dublin i believe mm -hmm. i was at the jameson distillery mm -hmm. and i learned this proverb okay may you get oh no i think i screwed it up oh <laughs> we should have done this at the beginning of the show it sounded bit good may, Keep it going, <laughs> there, Eric. Mm -hmm. may you always get what you want but never what you deserve ah there you go <laughs> I don't know how to think. I'll drink to that. They said it in the distillery, it. yeah. Yeah, they said it in the distillery, Marty. <laughs> you know you were there. That's it, folks. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thank you for celebrating my 55th birthday with me. And thank you to my hey, loving Dave. family for your love and support. We'll be back Friday with another regular edition of the uh, Paranormal News 60 Minutes segment. Uh, Greg Lawson will be with us as well. We're going to have a lot of fun. We'll see you there right here on the best in Paranormal Talk Radio. This is the Paranormal 60 with Dave Schrader and friends.
The Paranormal 60 is a Birthdays is Hard production.